All right, Robin Clark, what's going on? It's been a little bit since we recorded. So how are you doing over there in Toronto? Well, I've been speaking to you, but tell tell the folks that are listening, how are you doing over there? Yeah, it's been a couple, it feels like two weeks since we last recorded, but I'm doing great. It's actually a very rainy day. So it's like a nice podcast recording day. Um, and yeah, I just am excited for this episode. I know last time you were singing. <laughs> On our, on our episodes so i don't know if people are expecting that again just a heads up <laughs> well i woke up this morning and uh, i hopped out of bed and my oilers have been doing really good i know you care so much about hockey um, oh yeah but yeah my edmonton oilers they are at this point i mean it'll probably change by the time we release this episode if you're a hockey fan you'll know but they're up one nothing in the Western Conference final. So I woke up this morning with just extra pep in my step, and it was a beautiful morning. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know that song? Every every time I wake up and I feel good, I think about that song. You know? Do you know what song I'm talking about? I don't about know no? which song you're talking oh, man. about. See, you know, and we got the copyright and the licensing issues. Otherwise, I would say, you know, Mike, our editor, I'd say pop that in there, but uh i'll show you robin off, okay. off off camera yeah um yeah you, you i think you'll recognize it it's just like a classic they played in like every movie when it's like when it's a beautiful morning it's just the birds are chirping and that song is usually playing anyways i just had to sing um and grace everyone with that uh in their ears um what were we just talking about <laughs> um, um well we're just talking about before we start recording how we both had kind of a couple of off days over the last week where we just yeah. weren't really high energy. We were kind of on the struggle bus, both of us, um, and how, you know, just how we kind of were dealing with that. And then we're like, hey, let's let's talk about this. Yeah, look, I have, uh, you know, I often talk about how I've gotten to a place I never thought I would get to. Like I've completely and entirely transformed my health. And that includes, I mean, lots of different facets, but mental and physical, uh, and emotional and spiritual and financial. Um, but mentally and physically, uh, yeah, I've come a long ways, but you know, I, I still have off days and I don't know if it's because I'm still, you know, I did a lot of damage to my body for many years, whether it be, um, <laughs> too many stimulants, overworking, lack of sleep, too much partying, too much drinking, too many an antibiotics, too much shitty food, um, yeah. So like, I, you know, I, there's a part of me that thinks like I'm still paying the consequences of that. Um, there are on most days when I'm dialed in with my routine and, and my eating and my morning routine, the morning sunlight and grounding and workouts and movement and keeping my stress in check. I usually feel pretty good. And then there's days where I just feel unbelievable but then there's also days that I feel off, you know, mm -hmm. there's days where I don't know what it is, but I just, the brain fog comes in and, you know, I just feel a little sluggish and, you know, how often is that? Well, less than it used to be. I would say maybe like, I'd say maybe like one day a week, I get a messy day. Um, and we're going to get to, I call them messy days. We're going to get to what I mean by that, but just an off day once a week. And sometimes they're quite bad. Um, and then sometimes they're just like, oh, I just don't have it in me. And it could also have to do with the day before. Some days are overwhelming and stressful because, you know, building a business is inevitably so. But um, yeah, so I call them messy days and I have a strategy mm -hmm. um, for them. So Robin, I'm sure you heard me say this a million times. Um, do you adopt the same messy day strategy that I have or what do you do on a messy day and, and how often do these happen for you? Yeah, I mean, so my messy days are like they typically happen after I've like done too much the day or two before, which is exactly what happened because I overbooked myself because I was like, no, I'll be fine. And it hit me. I think it like it just hit me. And 
for me, it's more that I'm just like extremely tired and extremely anxious and nothing I do. I can go to the gym, like nothing really seems to help. But yeah, I do have a messy day strategy as well. And I just kind of have to accept like, hey, this is a write off day, but I'm still going to do a, a few key things that I know I can do because there's always some like really easy and boring tasks that you can do in your business, like posting to Instagram, doing client support and stuff. I mean, not saying that's boring, but it's like very straightforward on one level and you know that you you have to get that done number one and you can get that done on those days and so it's just knowing like okay I have my key things that I need to do but I'm first going to do a couple of things that are going to try just like get me reset so I'll go I did go to the gym I went to Pilates didn't help <laughs> usually it does but you know typically I'd go in the sauna like I find the sauna for like 20 or 30 or even 40 minutes that's when like I really reset and I didn't do it this week I don't know why um and then it's just like working in little snack bites throughout the day like <laughs> getting something done going for a walk getting something done like lying on the couch like just kind of getting through the day and yeah I mean I'm not gonna lie it it still makes me anxious when I have those days like I don't like it I don't I'm not relaxed but I just accept that hey it is what it is and I also know myself well enough that I will have a day later on in the week where I kind of hyper focus and I just get like way more than you would think is possible done in in that time yeah, well, look, I think one of the most powerful things that we're doing here is, look, we've been in this game for a good amount of time. I've, I've been in this this particular business and model for five years, although it feels like I've only, you know, I wasted two years of spinning my tires and didn't really get started for a while. But uh, I've been in this for years. You've been in this for a couple of years. You've had a lot of success. I've had success. Um, but I think one of the most powerful things we're doing is just um, you know, being open and saying like, Hey, this, if, on all accounts, I think this happens to everyone, mm -hmm. you know, and I know a lot of successful entrepreneurs as well too, in my network, or I interview them or, you know, some of them, are, some of them are my friends or family. Like, you know, we just, we have off days, you know? Um, and I think just acknowledging that because sometimes I think that it's easy to feel kind of lonely in that it's easy to feel like you're isolated, like you're the only one, like, why is this happening to me? Like, because from the outside looking in, we're just seeing people's Instagrams, right? And of course, mm -hmm. it's like their highlight reel. And it's like, of course, people look like they always have energy, right? Mm -hmm. But the fact of the reality is, is, um, you know, and, and look, maybe some people are very consistent with their energy. And maybe there are anomalies, uh, where it's like, no, I have energy every single day. And it's like, cool. Okay. Um, I would very much bask in that because I think that's that's the exception. I think most people and you know, I'm also looking at our our group and our academy and our community and the other communities I've been a part of like, that's a situation where you get to see kind of a, a subject of people. And you get to see um, commonalities. And I think a commonality is the human experience is like some days you just have off days. Now, what is my strategy in a messy day situation? Very similar to what you just said, Robin. I, I identify that it's a messy day. It's an off day. And then what I do is I remind myself of a quote that I love. I think it's by Woody Allen, where he says 80% of success is just showing up. Mm. And I really believe that. You know, and I think consistency uh, in most people's minds looks like it's every day showing up 100%. Consistency is just every day showing up and giving what you have to give, right? And some days you're only going to have 30% to give. Now, don't be in denial. Make sure that you you push yourself healthily. But yeah, like uh, that's what I do, Robin. I, I'm just like, there's some days where I just, for whatever reason, I'm foggy, I'm tired. What I think is a really great first your morning routine is so important. Like there are things that I can do in the morning that if I'm feeling like 30% in the morning can probably bring me to like 50 to 70%, right? That these are things like getting outside, getting sunlight in your eyes, putting your feet on the ground, going for a walk, breath work, cold therapy, moving your body. Uh, you mentioned sauna. Um, you know, yeah, lifting weights, going for a workout, um, like meditation. These are things that I would find out. And I think everyone reacts differently to these or responds differently to these things. I would find what are your tools to make you go from like, 
you know, 10, 20, 30% to like 50, 60, 70%, because I think we all have those activities. And I think the problem is, is, is a lot of people, when they get those messy days and they have an off day, they feel tired. They don't do those things. Mm-hmm. You know, they just, they, they, they lay on the couch and they, you know, they don't do anything. And look, sometimes it's just a nap. Um, so what I'll usually do on my off days is take a nap in the afternoon. Okay. I don't take a nap every day in the afternoon. And I try and make sure that it is 20 minutes or less, because if you go more than 20 minutes, then you actually get into like one of your sleep cycles and then you'll wake up in the middle of it. And then your body is, uh, and your brain is really groggy. I'm sure everyone kind of knows, uh, that feeling when you kind of oversleep, that's why is because you woke up kind of in the middle of one of your sleep cycles and your body wanted you to stay asleep. Essentially, that's like a layman's way of putting it and how I understand it. So anyways, yeah. go And then just like you said, Robin, it's like I, I do this. I say, what is the biggest lever? Because we were just talking about how we have endless to-do lists. What is mm-hmm. the biggest lever in front of me? Meaning, what is the task that I could do right now that is going to be the biggest lever that's going to take me closest to my goals? And we all have that one task and it's, yeah, it's overwhelming because we look at our list and there's so many things to do. And, you know, usually on those days, it's just the revenue generating activities. You know, it's uh, usually on those days. I mean, I always go into the community and do support on those days to get that done. Um, I always try and do content on those days because it's like, that's just one of those like continuous activities that you want to be consistent in very revenue generating. And I would say, although I don't do it anymore and you're not in that position either where we've actually hired this out and you might be there as well too. If not, you will get there if you keep going. Um, but I would also say like prospecting and like any Mm -hmm. of your lead gen, you know, just the things that just like are the most growth generating activities, try and just focus on doing those every day. Cause that's really what's required. Yeah, you might not get that task done that's on your list that's like kind of a one-off that you have to get done. Do it tomorrow when you have more energy. Mm. Yeah, I totally agree. And I think like things like recording a podcast or whatever, you can move those to another day and just get those key things that are really revenue generating done um, on those days. And I think one of the things I keep trying to rewire myself to think about on those days is where it's like, you know, sometimes what's really beneficial is just giving yourself permission to go to the gym for three hours and like not saying work out for three hours, but like just giving yourself permission to only start your work day at like 1 p.m., which is something that I still sometimes struggle with. But I'm like, hey, I'll actually show up so much better than at 1 p.m. for those two, three, four hours, whatever I'm able to put in. If I just allow myself to go forget about work right now and kind of just when you're talking about the biggest lever you can pull, well, one of the biggest levers is always investing in yourself and your energy, I find. like, And looking at that as like a business investment because ultimately like you're the most important part of your business. So I think for anyone who struggles with feeling guilty for doing stuff like that, it's way better than sitting at home and trying half-heartedly to do something for five hours and not really getting anything done. Like go and like allow yourself that time and just look after yourself and fill your cup and then you'll you will have a lot more energy when you come back yeah 100 percent. when i look at the last messy day that i can think of that i had um i remember i woke up i actually felt pretty decent in the morning so i started to like do work i didn't feel like amazing but then i started to do work and i crossed off you know quite a few things in the morning, um, till about like noon. And then I just started to like, get really tired and felt fatigued. So what I did, what, and I still had things to do. I had like three things in my mind that I was like, Oh, I gotta get these things done. But I was like really struggling. Cause I'm like, I'm just not, not in a state where I feel I'm going to even use the term motivated to, to do these things. Right. And I often talk about how motivation is not something we should rely on. And I'm all for that. But so what I did was I, I had a nap. I laid on the couch. I gave myself grace to have a nap. Okay. That's something that the old killer wouldn't have done. Um, and the reason why I did it is because I said, you know what? I can like try and they're big tasks, by the way, if they, they weren't like three, like quick, like let's just cross them off the list. If they were, I probably would have just got them done, but I gave myself a nap or gave myself the grace to have a nap. 
then I woke up and then I was still a little bit like, you know, my body, you could tell just like was not there and it wasn't like alive. It wasn't feeling alive again. So, so then I said, you know what, I'm going to go to the gym. It was kind of a shitty day outside. So I'm going to go to the gym and I'm just going to walk on the treadmill for like 45 minutes or an hour and, you know, just get some movement in, right. Just get the blood flowing. And, you know, cause I, I wasn't, I was too tired to do like heavy weights or anything like that. So what I did was I went to the gym, walked on the treadmill. I think I ended up walking on the treadmill for like 30 minutes. Then I switched to the bike and then I started to get my energy back. Like I really, really started to feel good again. And then I remember I started actually working on the bike a little bit. Then I went back to my place and then I ended up uh, crossing off those three things and getting them done. And yeah, I worked into the evening, but do you see what I did there? Like, so normally I, you know, I could have tried to do that in the afternoon. Um, and I was really tired. What I uh, could have ended up doing and what I think a lot of people do is maybe they don't have the nap and go do movement. Maybe they eat some shitty food and they lay on the couch and they watch Netflix. And then all of a sudden, mm -hmm. then they, they feel shitty in the evening as well too. But because I gave myself that grace to like do those like, energy generating activities then it allowed me to get those things done in, in the evening and i actually felt great i felt so just you know again and and that just reminds me of one more thing if if you're having a lot of off days if you're having a lot of messy days and you're eating like shit you're not moving your body on a daily basis you're not getting you know morning sunlight your stress levels are out of control you're not prioritizing sleep you're not drinking water you're not you know like, man, look, you want to build a business, you want to be successful, your business is going to be a reflection and a projection of your internal state. And if your internal state is unhealthy, well, so is your business going to be mm -hmm. your business is going to be unhealthy as well, too. So yeah, and you know, what I think about all the time is that when you're in the early stages of business, you're building habits that are going to go with you like in the long term with your business. So if you train yourself that when I'm stressed and when I'm having an off day, this is how I deal with it with sugar and with or with Netflix or whatever, as your problems get bigger and your stress gets he like higher in business, that's going to be your coping mechanism that you kind of go to first. And it's one of those things where like, I don't want to say anything mean, but I see people on Instagram who've built incredible businesses, but their coping mechanisms for what they turn to in stress has caused them massive health issues. Like I see, and I won't work with people like that because I don't want to be with a coach who's like, oh no, go have a Starbucks, you you deserve it. Like I don't want to be told that because I see them dealing with like severe health issues. And these are people who were fit and strong and healthy and they just didn't have the right habits built into their day to day to deal with the stress. And it's one of those things where you're like, okay, it's fine going and treating yourself occasionally, but like, what are the day-to-day -day things that you're kind of grabbing onto when you're in those moments of stress or having messy days, because that stacks over time. And so even just like this example, if when you're stressed, every time you go and get like a chai latte from Starbucks, which used to be my go-to versus going for a 20 minute walk over years, that stacks up, that's going to have like one's going to have an incredibly positive impact on your health and the other is going to cause a lot of issues like over yeah time. let this let this be a wake-up call if you are not look guys i know you look around in society and most people are treating themselves to processed food all the time and you know drinking alcohol on weekdays and or binging on the weekend and like yeah we see it all over the place but i mean i don't, I don't know like that is why one percent like th there's a top one percent out there in society there's a you know there's a top two percent there's a top five percent and as you go up on that level and i'm just talking in terms of success and i'm not just talking monetary success that's obviously included but i'm also just talking like family success relational success like all of these things that are you know spiritual success health success like there's a top one two five percent you want to be in the highest percentile and guess what that takes? That takes discipline, right? So yeah, people always come to me and they're they're like, man, like, how do you have so much discipline? And it's not really discipline. It's just 
I, I'm I'm so afraid of losing and not being in that top one percent. I, I fear mediocrity so much that it just overshadows the desire to get two minutes of satisfaction to I don't know, like eat, eat, eat a fucking chocolate bar in, in the grocery store or, you know, go out every weekend and get wasted. Like, you know, it's mm -hmm. just that's that's the case. So Anyways, Robin, I think we've probably got our message across, guys. I hope you really got a lot out of that. Uh, one way in which you can really stay dialed in uh, for your just routine and keeping um, taking care of yourself and maintaining your energy and being around a community that actually does the same uh, is to actually be in a group program. And we have the uh, Academy, the business Academy, where we help you become a coach. Just go to the awbiz dot com sign up for a call with one of our elite coaches and see if our business academy where me and robin work with you extensively and so does the uh, community and there's lots of support and we have a blueprint for you to build your coaching business see if it might just be the thing that changes everything in your coaching business okay again that's the awbiz.com love you guys and we'll see you on the next one